All right, so why the DC shirt? Why don't you like Batman? Okay, so DC shirt because for Father's Day, my kids got me this. And, and Alyssa's been trying to convert me over for a while. Okay. But, you know, it's just a different era of DC, different era of Marvel, whatever. Marvel's okay. now coming out with a Craven the Hunter where he's not a hunter anymore and he loves animals. So Marvel may be losing their way. But <sighs> that hurts my I soul. I got this shirt. Hold on. I also generally hate shirts with stuff on the back. Okay. But, uh, you know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Father's like Day present. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, what don't I like about Batman? I, uh, he's fine. I mean, it's just the whole, there's no way he could hold his own with Superman. No. In that universe, there's just no way. And no. so it's when they do that kind of stuff, it just annoys the crap out of me. It is right? annoying. But it's also kind of like, I don't know, I guess the Hulk and Daredevil. Not that they ever went at it, but but you got that kind of thing. Anyway, yeah. Gene, I haven't seen you, dude. It's been a bit. I, I sent you that text. I said, hey, I need to put pause yep. on you. On okay. me? I did not do that. I did not say <laughs> that. I did not text that. I did do it right here, but however, we will uh, we'll, we'll edit that out. Um, <laughs> things are changing like crazy, man. Not just my lack of a haircut. It's getting uh, a little wild. It is. I, I'm going to get that taken care of later today. Shall we roll the incredible intro footage? Oh, you should deal with that. Did you hear that? I did. I don't know what that was. I thought my water cooler exploded. <laughs> it uh, did. So what are we doing? Are we? Is this the episode? I think so. I think we just go. We just go. Um, <laughs> <I think it is. laughs> so anyway, yeah, I, I shut you know, and so we need to put the podcast on hold. We put just yeah. about everything on hold except for I saw that uh, the newsletter, and that's because we're kind of changing everything up. So what's going on? What are we um, changing? I think the biggest thing is we got to this point now where we don't have to just do a whole lot of events to be sustainable. So now being able to slow down and look at everything, I can see where the challenges are in the bureau because of the growth. Okay. It's grown so fast. That is a good look. You should, you should keep that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I like it. Um, no, we just, as we're growing so fast, the foundation started showing cracks, right? Mm -hmm. It's like suddenly you've got so many more new people in a conversation that you were just in. And you're, you're talking with some people and suddenly six, seven new people show up each week. <laughs> and you're like, okay, I'm uh, having this conversation. Why is that person here? Where did they come from? Right. And you can see, you could say some of it's onboarding, right? Like you do a better job of onboarding and letting people know who's coming in, but it's growing so fast, which mm. is a wonderful problem, whatever. Um, for some folks, it's getting a little, not annoying, but just, I, I'd say it's losing some of the value because- it doesn't feel as intimate as it once did. I got you. Yeah. Well, I guess that's what happens when you've been around for a while. Well, yeah, 10 years, right? And then, yeah. um, but but the thing you have to realize, like we did this uh, Better Bureau survey, asking everybody, where's the most value in the community? Slack conversations was number one. New relationships, people that I meet is number two. Hmm. In-person events, number three, online events, number four, resources, library, that kind of thing, number five. Um, now, what I didn't realize until I was talking, we had like a little, uh, you know, one of our bureau sessions, the first one after the survey, had some people come on and um, probably had about 40 people that showed up that just wanted to talk about it. And uh, one person said something that was really intuitive when we went back and looked and they said, um, yeah, I couldn't rate an in-person event because I joined during the pandemic. Oh, wow. So in person is going to take a hit and Slack yeah. conversations are going to, are going to go up. And then when you take a look at it and realize that we've grown over a thousand percent during the pandemic, right? That's going to skew those, those numbers, which also means like the old guard who's used to going to events and stuff, they're right. going to be like, Slack is great, but. I want to see everybody. Yeah. Does that necessarily mean that just because they joined, they didn't attend an event, an in-person event? 
No, in fact, a lot of people um, did, well, not in person. A lot of people have only attended the online events. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Well, wow. for two years, figure we, I mean, we've had some camps. They're mm-hmm. not exactly the, the most accessible because of the cost. Right. And also the time and the travel. Like we got two events coming up at the end of the year, both in Costa Rica. And there are people who want to go, but don't want to travel international. So it's like that, that's kind of, I mean, it's very popular. It sold out really quick, but those are the other things. But I think the bigger thing is when the Bureau grew, it grew organically. Mm-hmm. We have so many different types of people in the community now. I mean, like if you just look, if, if you call it the Bureau of Digital, which I'm actually moving away from that too, but you've got owners of web shops, you've got those that consider themselves digital agencies, You've got um, web. You've got uh, search shops, marketing. You've got uh, mm-hmm. brokers. You've got consultants. You've got different types of people coming in, um, and you've got creative shops, right? So you may have like more of a traditional right. advertising agency that doesn't really have a digital presence, right? But we all have the same challenges, right? But when we're all in the same room, some people their customers, their prospects are in that room. Like if you're a broker or consultant of certain types, right? Mm -hmm. And that's kind of been the fastest growing segment in the last two months. Brokers? Not just brokers. And when I say brokers, I mean, sometimes these are just people looking to connect, not necessarily a shop to sell. Got you. Got you. It could be, you know, helping a shop find the work they need or they have a customer or whatever, but, um, that's that's kind of the thing that I'm I'm working on is how do we get everybody with the right people, meaning the people who have the same context they do, right? Like I, I also run a search and marketing firm, mm-hmm. um, but at the same time have enough variety in there that it's not just the same, right? People. So for example, if you're having a financial question, you would want kind of a financial expert to be yep. able to help out, as opposed right. to you know, people just sitting there looking at each other going, I don't know. It sucks that we all have this problem. <laughs> yeah. Right. Which yeah. honestly, a lot of the bureau over the last four or five years has yeah. been people <laughs> saying it kind of sucks. We all have this problem. So that's what I see as part of my responsibility now, especially as the member revenue helps calm things down. Yeah. So we can actually focus on what's the best thing for the community. That's pretty cool. So what you said you're getting away from Bureau of Digital. What does that mean? Well, I, I think a big part of it is, so digital is obviously the, the origin of, it's where I came from in a lot of ways, you know, advertising and then digital. It's how we met. Mm-hmm. It's a, a huge connecting point for a lot of the people currently in the community. That's not going away. Basically, and, and I've shared a little bit of this with you and I've, I've shared it in like the newsletter, some other places, but we're going to take the, I mean, we're, we're rapidly going towards a thousand members, right? And and that's just not, that was interesting. Um, <laughs> it's just not, I definitely need that haircut, man. Oh my God. What is happening? Um, ah, wild, get a little crazy. I know. Carl going wild. But, uh, but looking at how do we break into smaller groups? Mm-hmm. Um, so on two levels, one, how do we just get all the, the digital agencies in a group because they are going through the same thing, mm-hmm. right? But then take it a step further to where you have a smaller group, which we're calling Bureau Circles. And this would be like, it's going to be somewhere between eight and 12 people that are just in your immediate group. And that's the way we're going to scale intimacy, which has been a challenge that we've been dealing with for the last mm-hmm. five years. So to do that, um, and when you realize that a lot of, I, I've heard this from a lot of people who are in a creative industry, architecture, for an example, that really thought the things we were doing sounded applicable to them, but they're not in digital. So they didn't want to do it. And and also, it's not about trying to be all things for all people or all businesses. Right. It's about making sure we have a place for different types of, of people. That's cool. So yeah, so I'm I'm leaning towards bureau communities right now. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. I've always thought that the you're talking about websites. The the production process of a website mirrored the film industry. Like 
almost to a T. I always thought that, like, why didn't we call yeah. ourselves producers and directors and stuff? Um, because you know, the people from the film industry have could have so much insight in the way we do things that they've dealt with a similar situation like for years and they've solved it. And, you know, of course we're reinventing everything all the time. So, <laughs> well, and, and in, in fairness to us reinventing things all the time, the tools we use change all the time. The process, you. We change you. All the time. you know, so it's like, and I appreciate that film has that same thing going on. Yeah. Right. Um, but then even if you look at other professional services groups, right. Yeah. Legal, financial, mm -hmm. You know, that sort of thing, not insurance, get them the hell out of here. Uh, <laughs> but, but other groups who may find that they do have more of a, a footprint right. or maybe right. they're, they're in slightly different verticals, they don't see it as competition, right? I mean, right. that's been the amazing thing about the Bureau since day one is nobody has really looked at it as competition that, right. that I'm going to be sharing all of my intimate secrets with. Yeah. But I think maybe those people just don't show up. They Probably see not. It and, you know, because because when we do have people sign up like that, um, we do uh, kind of pull them aside and I'll say, hey, just so you know, you're going to have to share. You're going to have to be you know, vulnerable. You're going to have to do all these things. If that doesn't sound cool, then don't do it. Right. Right. It's not worth it. <laughs> no. Yeah. Totally not worth yeah, it. Yeah, I think but. you're right. And, and from day one, you've like even from the very first event back before you took it over completely was, you know, a gentleman's agreement, a gentle person's agreement to like don't share these stories, you know, like outside of the yeah. room we're in. And, and I've I always promise not to I've reveal that. anything yeah. that a reasonable person would deem sensitive or confidential. Right. That's that of part of the digit, the, the DNA of, of Bureau, you know? Yeah, for sure. And I think what's really interesting is now last week released the Your Bureau survey. So we had the Better Bureau survey, which kind of just, I wanted everybody to say, what are the most important things? What are the things you can't get rid of? What are the things that don't matter? Like we spend a ton of time on the resource library. Right, where does <laughs> it rank? It's yeah. in the bottom, right? And it's just like, good news, we don't have to do it. Bad news, sorry, it took two years to find out. Um, but then when you start to look at that and realize, okay, this is what matters. Then my vision for this, and, and this... I mean, it's going to annoy some people and I get that, but I think anytime you, you make real change, mm -hmm. that means that some people are going to feel like, why would you do that? And right, right. I did have, I had a really good friend, a couple of really good friends ask, why are you changing things? It's going great. And really it's because I feel like I'm serving at the pleasure of the community. And right. if things aren't quite right, we can make them better. This is not about the amount of money you can make on membership and sponsorship and all this kind of crap and events. For me, it's not. It's, it's truly about how do I reconstruct this core concept and platform so that people can get back to those just real relationships and, and intimacy and all the things that we got out of 2012. I'm not saying that we can recreate it in a laboratory, but just to try to at the very least get things so that you know who's in a room, right, is going to be a big way to go. But, but the other side of this, along with pausing the podcast and some of the other marketing stuff. And, and this is going to sound really weird to some people, but to put a hold on sponsorships and partnerships. So like the ones we currently have, you know, are obviously intact and we're using them. I didn't, I didn't like shut it down and give money back. I ain't stupid. Um, man, maybe a little, did you see the hair? That was ridiculous. But, um, but so for me, when, when I look at that, it's because I also don't want to be torn in two directions. And right. this is something that's happened you know, right up until the pandemic, really, and, and maybe even a little bit after, where the Bureau was not financially stable. It didn't have anything like the membership revenue to, to make it just okay. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not worried like I was for four years. Right. Um, and you would get a, a sponsorship for like 90 grand, right? Yeah. Um, and you get to some smaller sponsorships in the like 20 to 50 grand range. Anybody listening is probably like, holy crap, that sounds amazing. Well, it was, except that I'm now beholden to them. Mm -hmm. And they want information, not not all of them. I mean, everybody that we sponsored with, with the exception of a couple that you know we had yeah. to boot, yeah. really great. Um, 
but I am feeling like, okay, I need to get them more information about the community in a generic way, not in any kind of privacy right. sensitivity way. I need to find ways for them to get value out of this. And it takes me away from the community and making sure the community gets what it needs. So well, definitely I'm make you not want to change that. anything. What's that? I said, it'll definitely make you not want to change anything. Right. Exactly. Because mm -hmm. I mean, everything's working. Mm -hmm. But you also know this about me. I have to tinker. I am one of those volatiles that when things seem fine, that's when we really get animated <laughs> and ready to roll. So that it's it's all kind of a, it's weird to say it out loud. I've got so many notebooks just with things sketched out, kind of mad scientist looking <laughs> as, again, the hair. Started um, with the hair. But when I look at it, I'm not saying that sponsorship partnership won't come back. I'm just thinking it's going to be different. Right. And for a lot of people, having a variety of folks in the channels when they're trying to have the conversations can be really disrupting because they're like, oh, I don't want to say this in front of mm -hmm. this person, this group. Um, so it'll be interesting. I, I'm actually playing around with the idea of sponsored channels. So these yeah. would be like SME channels, subject matter expert mm -hmm. channels, um, that sort of thing. But for now, it's, it's really about this your bureau survey that just went out, which is telling me so much more about each individual. So I can start to find different ways to connect people we may not have known about. We, we have somebody in the community <clears throat> who in their age and weight class holds national lifting records. Oh, wow. Right. Right. I known that. Right. Right. But now this survey, which is going to go out to all, I mean, I mean we're, we're rapidly getting close to a thousand members now. Um, they're all going to have to fill this out hmm. in order to make the move to the, the new bureau, to the new hmm. architecture. And uh, there's some sensitive questions in there. I mean, questions that were really hard to figure out how to ask. Uh, thank God the internet exists, you know, because I could research how people had done it wrong as well as correctly. Interesting. Uh, or at least in a better way. I don't know that there's a right or a wrong yeah. way. But. Well, I mean, whatever you need to do to get to that level of personal connection. You know? Yeah. I mean, it, just for example, right? I mean, we Juneteenth just happened on Sunday and the national holiday yesterday. And when I was going through, because one of the things that came out of the earlier survey was questioning, you know, where are we with the diversity initiative? Mm -hmm. We've raised some, we've raised some money. We haven't been able to necessarily spend that money the way we want to. Yeah. We don't want it to just be scholarships because let's face facts. The reason people don't hang out with us isn't because they don't have the money. Right. It, it's not like you're giving somebody something. Maybe you're lowering risk and that's cool. Um, but when I was asked that, I was like, I really don't even know how diverse we are right now. Right. It's um, yeah. It, it, people are coming in so fast when you look at it, like literally a, a big week would be like 12 new members. The yeah. summer slowed things down a little bit, but it's always like three to five a week. Wow. And um, when you get that, you don't really take the time. And we didn't have anything in the onboarding. Yeah. To find out what's your ethnicity, right? Um, what's your sexual orientation, right? What's your gender identity? The, mm -hmm. These questions are really hard to ask. And they're so important especially mm -hmm. for the non-visual diversity. So this, this has become, um, it, I mean, it, we literally took about a month putting this survey together, probably about a, a week for the initial draft and then a week to figure it out, um, make sure it felt right, and then kind of testing it with some people and then yeah. you know, modifying it and getting it out there. But one of the things that was really important to me was, and, and we, it, remember, we're going to have like, almost a thousand responses on this thing. Working with, with our research person, Nick, um, he was like, well, you need to be able to make sure that you can actually analyze this data. Yeah, right. But, so race is a construct, right? We, we've all talked about that. And um, ethnicity and, and that sense of where you grew up and your culture and this sort of thing. So that was the way that I went. And also not trying to, put it in a checkbox, but instead say, you know, how do you describe your ethnicity? Hmm. And what's been really interesting is seeing the people who come and say, well, I consider myself Danish, 
right? And now they're like going through this whole thing. Whereas if we just said, you know, are you are you white? Are you Hispanic? Right. Are you black? Tell are you, you anything? Yeah. Native American? You're whatever. Um, so this is really interesting to see because the other thing is like BIPOC is such a just a a junk drawer, right? It, it's like it's just where you put anything that's not white, mm -hmm. and that's not cool, right? It seems like that's what not it's fair to somebody who who ends up in that that category, and right. a lot of things don't apply to people just because they're not white. Like Juneteenth, I, I have a, a good friend, John, who used to be a, a um, what do you call those things? Client. <laughs> he used to be a client at Engine. Uh, we had dinner a couple of weeks ago, and um, he was he's Jamaican by birth, mm. but has no Jamaican accent. You know, pretty much American accent. Yeah. And uh, he told me that he didn't know what Juneteenth was either. Ah. Until it became well, a federal holiday, because it doesn't impact him. Right. He doesn't. Right. But if if you just Put John in a lineup right. and say, <laughs> "Is he white or is he black?" Right, right. right? So it's like th this whole thing just really bugged me, and I, I researched right. into it. And now, now the one thing, and I just to be completely honest, to to address what Nick said and to to focus on our diversity needs, right, or our focus, we still have to have something that we're going to put in there to show the diversity. Hmm. So we do have. Uh, one of the people who helps us out, an admin, is going in there, looking at it and saying, okay, white or not white, right? Because that's that's how we judge ethnic diversity or racial diversity, if you want to call it that. Um, but then we, we get into gender identity and it's the same thing, right? I'm not going to, I'm not going to know. Mm -hmm what these check boxes are. In fact, um, one of the people who responded, responded transmasculine. And I had to, I had to ask my daughter. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was like, Alyssa, what is transmasculine? And so then she explained it to me. I said, ah, okay, I got it. Um, but if I had just put transgender, right, we wouldn't have gotten to that deeper understanding of how that person sees themselves. Yeah. Right? Or sees themselves. And so that's the other part of it. And then also a sexual orientation. Mm -hmm. There's not just one or two. I mean, and, and in fact, you know, getting back to the LGBTQIA plus, well, you have sexual orientation and gender identity mixed into that. Mm -hmm. Definitely not the same thing. Mm -hmm. You know, who you love and who you feel you are. Uh, yeah. Related, maybe. Yeah. But again, I think, it, it, and I don't think this is just America. I think it's just one of those no. things where... We're trying to understand, but we understand through categories. Right. And that's just painful. So th that that's was what we want to do. Yep. That was a really tough part of this whole process was figuring out how do you ask that? How do you explain why you're asking it? Um, and I'll say that everybody's responding to it, even though there may be, you know, I, I don't think it's, I don't think it's upsetting anybody. And if it does, right. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. If my focus is going to be building a truly diverse community or set of communities, um, this is how I can find out. And and that I never would have known that if some of the people in the community hadn't said, "Where are you?" And now I now I know. Now we have a much better picture coming together. And honestly, we're more diverse than I thought. You know, and that feels good. Now we're early on in getting everybody to respond. <laughs> But, um, but that feels really good. It's just, uh, and obviously that information stays private. Right. 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 Um, but it does help us because um, we also have a special interest and in, uh, um, like, a, I guess, hobbies and things you do for fun or to relax or whatever question. And that's going to really help drive what are new clubs. Like if we see that 20% of the community is way into, you know, anime or something. Well, okay. Right. Let's right. get together once a month and talk about that. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. The bigger your group gets, the harder it's going to be for you to individualize stuff. You know, it's well, just, see, it's the nature of the beast. That's where the ambassador program, I think, comes in now. So we had an ambassador program. It was suggested, and I really didn't know how to frame it or what to do. I just knew we had some issues and challenges, and, and the ambassadors were great, but they didn't have enough direction. They weren't sure where, where to go. Mm -hmm. But now, let's say that we do have. Let's just stick with digital agencies because that's kind of the core. 
and we get them into their new home, um, well, there's going to be an ambassador who basically just keeps eyes on things and makes sure that when people need stuff, they get it, or if they see a challenge or something that they serve it up. Um, And the ambassadors are going to get more, right? Like ambassadors won't have fees. They'll be able to attend events at cost, if not free, Um, you know, all that sort of thing. So they're going to get rewarded in that way. Um, Traditionally, traditionally, we've only done this a year or so, (laughs) but, but most of the ambassadors didn't seem interested in compensation. It was more about giving back. Sure. I can see that. Which I, I guess is kind of what an ambassador program is in a yeah. way. But um, but so I see them playing this role now where let's say that, that we've got the, the marketing mm-hmm. community. Well, we have people who run marketing shops that are ambassadors. Right. And so now they can be there and they can keep an, you know, just like I said, keep an eye on it. Mm-hmm. And also I, I think the other big part of this is once we, we get into the smaller groups, there's still going to be connective um, topics and things that are going to be at a high level. So there is still one main bureau where all of the communities can come in. And this is where we'll talk about health and wellness, right? This is where we'll talk about anti-racism. This is where we'll talk about team dynamics, things of that nature. But in the, in the smaller communities, that's where you're going to talk about, you know, probably how the economy is impacting you. Right. Um, challenges you're having in hiring, you know, things like that, that are, that are need kind of that extra lens, that extra mm-hmm. layer, um, are going to be at that, that level. The deeper well, yeah, level. even, yeah, I could see, I mean, even something like hiring, that's very different for a, you know, five person company as it is for a two, 105 person company. Exactly. Very different yeah, that's another, that's another one of the segmentation points is size of company. Mm-hmm. So yeah, there will be a high level with all digital agencies, but there'll also be, you know, a place for shops that are 50 to hundred people to talk. That's awesome. Yeah. Because yeah. you can't, you can't tell that in a Slack avatar, you know, I can't, <laughs> I can't right click you and be like, Oh, this is all the info. Yeah. Right. Um, you will in a way going forward, I haven't figured out exactly how we're going to do this, but a big part of the Your Bureau survey is creating the first official member directory we've had. Oh, wow. We've had a directory the community's put together. Right. That was more of a business kind of who does yeah, what, yeah. how right. can we connect thing. And I don't know what happened to it. Airtable like just decided to poop it out one day. It's like gone. Um, but, well, and also everybody had access to editor level. It was the only way it could work. Rut row. What row? But there was no contact info or, or right. stuff like that. Um, but anyway, yeah, so this will be the first member directory that's going to have all this information. In it. And obviously, it's going to change over time. Um, like, you know, most people stay with the Bureau a good three to five years. Like, it's very rare for people to flip quickly. And when they do, it's because something changed in the company or their employment or whatever. So it's a uh, there's going to be a need for them to be able to update this as well. I've gotten right. down to a couple of choices I'm looking at right cool. now. Um, but then there'll be a second directory, which will be the Bureau business directory. So one is just going to be the individual members. The other will be the complete uh, their businesses business yeah. directory because these things were kind of mashed together and they need to be separated so that we can take care of people as individuals, but also give them opportunities right. as business. Right. Yeah, because they might serve different roles in the same business too. Yeah, yeah, so for sure. Different. Wow. Yeah. So what are you doing with the in-person events? It's a great question. Um, obviously, they don't relate to everybody right now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so although they're doing they're doing okay, um, you know, we've got the Kickstarter model. You get enough deposits, mm-hmm. you green light, uh, and that works really well with owner events, right? Well, and that's not fair to say. Owner Summit struggled. But with camps, with owner camps, like mm-hmm. – they sell out really fast. For others, I think what we're going to do, um, first of all, it's still just me and Lori, right? We've got support from Brett. We've got support from Katie. Um, obviously, we got partners like Metis and Summit that are that are helping out with stuff. But, yeah. but in terms of the core day-to-day, it's me and Lori. And we can only do so much. And events, in a way, also take that role of a sponsor mm-hmm. where they take you away from necessarily what – bigger community wants. So another thing that came up in the Better Bureau survey was the idea of more frequent, um, I'll say, 
immediately relevant kind of uh, webinars and things that can be free. Yeah. Right. And it wasn't that people were asking for free things. They, the main thing was yeah. they were looking for more events that came with membership, but that also related to things they needed that were subject matter expert driven. So, for example, um, Google Analytics 4, right? GA4. Yeah, ex yeah, I was actually, what's weird is I was thinking that. I was like. Yeah. So that's one where I saw a lot of people having a conversation mm -hmm. about it. Figure with ambassadors, they'll be the ones who see the conversations and serve yeah. it up. Um, and I just reached out to the community. I said, hey, who's got experts on this? And we mm -hmm. had like six people show I'm up. I'm sure. Yeah. So now um, to be able to do that webinar and a panel or something and just yeah. have people show up to learn and do a, a, a Q&A, that's the kind of stuff that each individual group is going to be looking for. But for the in-person events, my plan is, uh, and I'm so, <laughs> hopefully Lori goes with me on this, um, but basically to do just one big event a year, supplemented with some of the smaller camps that have been popular and, and shown the most value, right? But so this, this idea is like a bureau gathering. That's cool. Where everyone in the community is <laughs> invited. We try, we kind of get a feel for how many people are going to be there. And then we find the location. Well, I mean, I'm sure we'll find the, you know, the general geographic location, but then sure. the actual venue. And we try to find a place we can just own. So if we end up with 300 people, let's find right. some place like Paradise Point in San Diego right, right. where we at 300 are pretty much going to own the joint um, and then kind of uncamp it where people have, there's a big board or, you know, obviously online and Slack or whatever, where people can just say, hey, I'm going to be discussing this yeah, and we will assign a location and then we'll say, okay, Gene is going to be talking about working out and working. And this is going to happen at the gazebo over on Fleming Island or whatever. Um, so I really like the idea of this place. It sounds delicious. Oh, you've already um, sold it. But then if, you know, if people want yoga in the morning or mimosas in the morning, like whatever, it's just going to be right. that kind of a thing. It will not be overly structured. And the, the conversations we do have, I could still see us having a keynote or two, but it's going to be on a higher level, like leadership or something like that that benefits everybody. And if we continue to grow like we are, we'll be able to get some, you know, pretty high profile, really on point people to come in and talk with us about different topics. So you are muted suddenly. Have you used this before? <laughs> That's all right. I was just going to keep talking anyway. Um, so that's the idea for uh, for splitting it up. And then I think also we'll have the opportunity at those bigger events where if, if you're in a bureau circle with, you know, your 8, 10, 12 other folks, you'll have an opportunity to meet them in person too. So, and, and Gene, I know you're suddenly off the air <laughs> and you don't know what's going on. I read lives really well. Um, but we're kind of at the end anyway, right? So on behalf of Gene Crawford, who has somehow muted himself indefinitely <laughs> and myself, thanks everybody for listening. Um, hey, he's back. I know. Lots of changes going on here at the Bureau and uh, we are wide open for input, suggestions, concerns, whatever. Uh, but I was telling Gene, I think I was telling you the other day, I just I feel like I have a clue what to do now. That's and awesome. before that, it was just hauling ass nonstop. Well, it was, it was probably 50% recovery and 50% not letting it go down the crapper because of COVID, you know? Yeah. I and think that's a lot of it. I'm just, man, I'm, I'm, I'm just fucking proud to know you and to <laughs> oh, have, have known you since I remember at front end developer conference, like, I don't even remember the year. It's probably like 2017, 2018 or something like that. And you were like, yeah, we're going to roll out digital memberships. <laughs> You're like, I'm just going to do it. I don't know. I don't even know if anybody will go for it. <laughs> and then it sold so fast. And to see it like be an actual thing. And it's, it's incredible. And to actually be part of the Slack community too. Um, yeah. 
it, it's 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 a real thing. And uh, I'm like I said, I'm just proud to know you and have been there since. Oh, since thanks, all that. Man. It's incredible. You know, I also want to say that uh, over the past probably six months, I've seen some of the the old community that I was part of as engine. <laughs> I've seen people who were never part of the bureau that are starting to join the bureau, <laughs> and um, it's just, it makes it's weird. It's like worlds colliding. You're like, I'll like get them all. Local folks, and you're <laughs> seeing uh, some folks who only knew me from Engine or whatever. Wow. Uh, so that's that's a lot of fun too. But yeah, it's awesome. it's exciting, and and everybody who is listening, <clears throat> the podcast will come back. We're just going to have to refocus it on what will make the most sense. Um, Honestly, you know, when, when I was doing the interview thing, we were getting like a thousand listens and now we're getting like 150 to 200, yeah. which that's not what it's all about. It's about me and Gene seeing each other once a week. We're going to do that. Regardless. I mean, come on. Y'all are just, you know, you're just lucky bystanders. Um, maybe innocent, maybe not. But, uh, but so that's something, are we going to go back to interviews? Are we going to get into different topics? And, yeah. and one of the challenges I have to figure out right now is, does the podcast become for members only? Does the newsletter become for members only? Mm, that's um, a, that's because a good if it question. does, we can do a lot more. Yeah. So yeah. We'll find out. We'll see. You guys hold on to your butts. Yep. Thank you, Samuel. Yes. All right, <laughs> Later, man. everybody.